Hi guys. Um, I'm here today to talk about my favourite TV shows. Um, I've mentioned it a little bit on this channel and I thought with the recent um, video I did about Robot Wars that I'm going to talk about some TV. It's not something that I talk about a lot because I don't actually watch TV like as it's aired. I tend to just binge watch the DVDs or find it online and watch it later. Um, or on a lot of, and in some cases they're like nostalgia things. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about TV shows. <laughs> um, number ten is a kind of a general one, just because um, of what kind of show it is, and I'm saying um, British panel shows for this because um, they're, they're obviously like weekly things and they're very topical at the time and you don't really pinpoint that one episode where this happened you just enjoy it all as a whole um so like for example um i really like qi i really like have i got news for you i really like eight out of ten cats i've actually met two members of the eight out of ten cats cast cast i say like it's a drama um i've met jimmy carr and i've met john richardson um, I really, really like Would I Lie to You, that might be the, my favourite one. Um, Never mind the Buzzcocks, that's really high up there. Um, oh God, there's so many of them, I can't think. All the big fat quiz shows, love them. Just basically, if it's got a lot of British comedians in a group, I like it. At Mock the Week, that was a really good one. That's kind of like hit its peak though. Um, yeah, like I, I just like British comedians getting together and they do have a couple of like Americans and Australians and things like that like occasionally in there But it is very much a British humour kind of thing um, So yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy that and um, so I've just put them as one big thing at number 10 because you know They're not really like standout shows. They're just one big general thing Anyways, number nine is something that I not too recently re-watched re from start to finish um, and that is Sabrina the Teenage Witch I loved this show as a kid and it's just like I say, it's, it stuck with me so much that I rewatched it all um, as an adult and I just I really loved it um, I really liked Sabrina as a character when I was younger now I prefer Harvey as a character I think it's just because of the comedy value like I still find bits of it funny even though it's quite a juvenile show um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch was a big 90s show on Nickelodeon um, she says, oh, what's her name? Starring Melissa Joan Hart. Oh, I can't remember her name then. Um, and it's about a, a girl who finds out she is a witch and she has to live with her aunts and um, she has to live in normal society and hide the fact that she's a witch while still trying to pass her witch test to become a like full blown witch. Yeah, and of course many hijinks in Shoe as you can probably tell and it was like one of those classic Nickelodeon shows so I'm sure you can guess that the feeling was very comedy based. Um, yeah, number eight is um, more of a recent show and that is The Big Bang Theory. M the, originally the reason why I started watching this and that it, I, it like stuck with me is that it reminds me of a group of friends that I've had since school, like a group of friends I've had for a very long time and while I'm kind of the Penny, <sighs> Penny's like my least favourite character, I'm kind of the Penny but like I can relate to it so much, like my four male best friends like at school were like very much Sheldon, Leonard, um, Howard and Raj, that like not they, they weren't exactly the same, even though we do say one of our friends is literally Howard Wallowitz. <laughs> but um, and so that it stuck to my heart because of that. And um, since the show's gone on, I actually really like it for Amy now. Amy's like my favourite character in that show, and I just I just find it funny and endearing. And I know a lot of people think it's really annoying, but I think because I've lived, with, well, I've known similar people throughout my life that. I can actually genuinely find it relatable and endearing. Um, yeah, so number seven is Futurama. In my opinion, much better than The Simpsons. <laughs> Sorry, I do love The Simpsons, but it's not up there with Futurama. I absolutely adore this show. Um, again, there's not, there's not. I love it for the characters. I don't relate to them as strongly as Big Bang Theory, but like, I just find every single character amazing like there's not one character that I think they're really like bad they're the weak spot of this show I, I love the whole cast it's just, it's just a great melding of such crazy characters that you wouldn't think would get along but they do 
and uh, it just works and I think it's funny and I find it absolutely hilarious um, it's um, the movies were not so like good but I'm glad they did that so that they could bring it back to do a couple more seasons sadly it's finished again now but it finished on a really good point um, it's great as a whole complete thing I'm, I'm really happy with Futurama really um, even though like some of my f more favourite seasons were before the reboot but um, yeah I really like Futurama um, I think my favourite characters are maybe Hermes or the Barbara like I like their family dynamic with the whole Barbado Slim rivalry and <laughs> it's I don't know what it is about them I just really enjoy them as characters and so yeah uh, number six is a childhood show that I was a little late on the bandwagon to and I'm probably way too old to still watch it and love it but I do and that is Spongebob Squarepants yes I adore Spongebob Squarepants um, again it's one of those shows that has kind of weakened over time like as you know the first like 10 seasons something is the best but I, I really love it and the latest movie was hilarious if you haven't seen Spongebob sponge out of water, go watch it, it's great, buy it, I love that movie, um, yeah, my f I just, I love everything about it, it's just so silly, and it's one of those shows that I kind of can quote a little bit, and it's like, you know, like when you just quote with your friends and you have that nostalgia factor, whereas, I don't, I just really like Spongebob, um, my favourite character is Plankton, I love its evil, like, plans and its plots, and I, I really love it when, um, they have to like bring out the good side of Plankton. Uh, I love his wife Karen and the fact that she basically hates him but she's with him anyway. <laughs> and um, It's just a really great show and it's got a good cast again even though I'm not a fan of Sandy Cheeks. She is the worst character by far. Um, but you know, this isn't going to be the first time I talk about characters I hate in shows I love. Um, so, next one is yet another cartoon but not quite as child friendly South Park. South Park is just like the cartoon of all cartoons I adore it and again like the first 10 seasons I've watched all the like the latest seasons and this latest one where they've like made every episode follow on and it was good but it wasn't like the height of South Park my, my favourite season is 7 um, uh, my favourite episode is the one where um, Cartman's hand is Jennifer Lopez um, or Mitch Connor. Uh, that's my favourite episode. Sorry, spoiler if you didn't know about it, but you know, it's been on a while. Um, and the only impression I ever do is from South Park, and you could probably already guess what it is, and I'll do it for you, and it'll be horrendous. Um, <clears throat> My only impression I know how to do is Cartman from South Park. That's the only one I've got. And uh, <laughs> that was probably the worst Cartman impression you've ever heard. But I've had people tell me I'm pretty good at it. And, you know, maybe people are just being nice. But that's the only impression I have. Or maybe I also do the Jennifer Lopez voice as well, which um, is a bit more like, Bean, I love you so much. I love you so much. <laughs> Which is a gentle lover's voice, but yeah, I absolutely love South Park, and it's just so ridiculous. And they point out so many things about society and just prove how like crazy things are. And I, it's re it's really smart, but really dumb. Like another character that I hate is Mr. Hanky. I hate the whole Mr. Hanky thing. Don't watch Christmas specials of South Park. Don't because I don't like the Christmas critters either. <laughs> just don't do it. Don't do it. Like uh, you know, I understand that. It's the potty humour in South Park sometimes just goes too far and it's just silly, like Terence and Philip were a bit... <laughs> but they really work in the South Park movie. That movie's great. Um, the next show on my list is the one I definitely can quote more than anything. Like I could probably do entire scripts of shows of it. And um, that is the It or IT crowd. Um, I adore this show, like everything about it just works and it's just so funny and ridiculous and it just is like it makes you want to go to work to have these crazy antics with your workmates and I, I, I just I really really love it and I'm probably not being subtle like I'm not being obvious as hell when I say my favourite character is Moss he's just so 
Like he was such, obviously such a sheltered child and lived this like perfect little lifestyle in his mum's house and then he's been let out into the wild and he's learning about the real world from people like Jen and Roy, worst influence ever, Roy. And um, it's just a great show and uh, it's you know, obviously it's about people who work in the ID, IT department um, of a successful business. Um, if you uh, if you are uh, American, they did a pilot of it, and it was awful. It was basically the script from the pilot of the first uh, UK show, but like they just Americanized it, and it just didn't work. Maybe it's because I'm not American. Um, but they did actually use Richard Ayoade, who is Moss as Moss. But they just changed jokes and things and it just wasn't quite there. So, you know. Um, my favourite episode of that is the dinner party episode. Um, is it just called the dinner party? I actually can't remember, that's bad. But I can quote it a lot. <laughs> I can quote so many things from the IT crowd. Um, yeah, that's my favourite episode because it's just like... Jen's trying to mix her outside of work friends with her work friends and it just... It doesn't quite go the way she wants it to, obviously, because, you know, it's a British sitcom. And, yeah, I love it. Uh, the next one is my favourite sitcom of all time, and that is Red Dwarf. Um, this is in my number three spot. I don't even know if I've been saying numbers. But this, this is number three, Red Dwarf. I love this show. Again, this is one where the characters just mesh so well together, and the entire, like, dynamic of the show is the fact that these four characters were meant to be the last like four characters stuck together this just it's just great um this is a show about a mining ship where um the entire crew is killed that's not a spoiler because it's in the like first episode um and um only one human is left and that is Dave Lister uh played by Craig Charles and um then um he encounters over like he, he managed to make other relationships and they bring one member back from the crew as a hologram because they only have power to do that and that is um, his roommate Rimmer um, who they're not exactly the best of friends let's put it that way um, and then there is a, a character called the cat who um, evolved from Dave Lister's cat and then they find a mechanoid called Crichton and that dynamic is just Perfect. The cat is my favourite character by far though. Um, I just like him, he's just crazy. I love the fact that he just walks around being like, I'm so beautiful, I can do what I want. Um, I have met three out of four of the main cast of Red Dwarf. I've met everyone but Craig Charles. So I've met Danny John Jules, who is the cat. I've met Chris Barry, who is a rumour. And I've met Robert Llewellyn, who is Crichton. Um, they came to a convention I went to and um, they did a panel as well, which was hilarious. Um, and uh, this show, again, there is a one weak point, and that is the movie, um, Back to Earth, which some people say is season 9, I guess it is really, because the next season I feel like was 10. Um, I, liked, I liked all the other seasons, people say some of the seasons are really weak, but I just enjoyed it all as a whole, other than the movie is alright, but it's definitely the weak point, yeah, Red Dwarf, love it. Um, currently wearing my shirt. Love Red Dwarf. Um, then number two, obviously we spoke about this before, is Robot Wars. And yes, I love it a lot for the nostalgia, but again, I've watched it. I've watched it countless times as a child and as an adult. And I'm really passionate about this show. Um, this is a show about people making robots and bringing them in to compete into a war to see who is the best one. <laughs> I think we all know the concept of Robot Wars by now. And I just, I just love it. Everything about it works. Again, presenting team, they kind of have the dynamic that I'm saying with like the Red Dwarf cast. They have that. Craig Charles, again, he's in two of my favourite shows of all time. Um, and, you know, the house robots were just so brilliantly made. And the competing robots that were either just like perfect or rubbish. And that was like, was, that was part of the fun. Find out which robots worked, which ones didn't. And, it was just great and I just it just reminds me so much of being happy and a fangirl as a child. Like that was my fandom and it's never gonna go away and I love it. 
And now to number one, my favourite show of all time, which is kind of weird because like every other show I've mentioned has been like one well, where you can watch any old episode and you know what's happening and you know it doesn't really follow too much but bits can follow on and they're just like comedy and then this is my favourite show of all time and it's True Blood. I've already spoke about it on this channel, I feel very passionately about True Blood. I have rewatched it several times. Um, the first few seasons I've watched a lot more than the last ones because um, I used to like, as soon as I got a new box set, well, in the leading up to me getting the latest box set of DVDs because I, I bought them season by season, um, I would watch every season in preparation. And so I've watched like the first four seasons so many times. Um, yeah, I, I love True Blood. Uh, but here we go, here's the controversial thing about my True Blood love. I adore True Blood, but I hate with a passion Sucky and Bill and Bucky as a couple. I hate them, despise them. <laughs> and like the worst plots in that show are because of them. Like people say they stopped watching it when it like became more about other characters and not them. I loved it more when it became about the other characters and not them. My favourite season is probably six, maybe seven, apart from the final episode. Though, you know, there is a highlight in there. Uh, yeah, like, I love True Blood. My favourite character of all time is Pam. She is just my girl. I love her. Um, I really love Lafayette too and Terra. Um, I love everyone but Bucky. Like, yeah, and I don't fancy anyone, like that seems to be the thing with True Blood, you like it because you fancy the cast. I don't fancy anyone. Uh, if I was going to be with someone, I'd pick Alcide just because he's a good choice, like he's a really good character, he's a nice man. He's not going to like do anything wrong by me, but I don't fancy him. Because <laughs> this seems to be that you can, that you're only really a fan of True Blood if you fancy someone. Nope, I don't fancy no one. <laughs> I would love to be a True Blood style vampire though, that would be awesome. Um, I, I, I just, I love it, I love this show, I don't care that people got thought it got ridiculous and I hate the fact that people say when it deviated from the books it got worse, no it got better. <laughs> um, if you've been on this channel long enough you'll know that I attempted to read the books and I actually rage quit after two um, because I'd already watched the show so much and I was so invested in it that I just couldn't bring myself to, to read the books and enjoy them. People also think that it's a lot about just like sex and nudity and again that's Bucky's fault mostly. That's Bucky's fault and I hate them and <laughs> and uh, <laughs> why do I watch this show because it, it, like I say it got more about the other characters and every other character has such a brilliant plot that I didn't care about the fact that I hated the main characters. And it's so much so that it's my favourite show, even though I hate them, because I just love every other character so much. And um, yeah, I'm really passionate about True Blood. And um, it's one of them shows that I can kind of quote, and I can, I, and, but there's just so much of it going on that it's hard to take it all in, even though I've seen it so many times. Every time I watch it, I'm like, oh, yeah, and I see this like new bit, and, I'm, and I'll, or I'll re remember something, and it just brings me just brings me so much joy to rewatch True Blood and um, yeah it's just a really weird show for me to like seeing as I don't really watch shows where you have to religiously watch them to understand what's going on like I don't do that I don't really watch serious television but True Blood isn't really serious and I'm not really into the whole like vampire thing apart from True Blood <laughs> and I, I don't know what it is about it but I just I got, I got a bit obsessed and um, yeah well it's, it's the characters that's what it is about it so yeah, those are my favourite TV shows. Um, if you agree with any of my opinions, let me know. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.